Hello everyone and welcome to yet another game from the final round of the 2019 US Championship. This is uh, most likely my favorite game from the entire championship. Lanier Dominguez Perez has to win this game uh, to at least, uh, well, tie for the first place with uh, Nakamura. Uh, and uh, Timur Grev not having the greatest tournament so far, but as I already said, uh, his games are often the most enjoyable ones, but with with the great excitement in games, uh, you know, you, you don't often get uh, a lot of points. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's really an insane game and it really shows what what, what a rich game chess is. Uh, so I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Uh, some of you may know T Timur Garev uh, as, as the blindfold king. He will often play uh, 40-50 people in a blindfold simultaneous exhibition, winning uh, pretty much most of the games. And also if, um, well, if you haven't seen, I believe it was in November last year, uh, he uh, he jumped out of an airplane uh, with a chessboard. There's, uh, we, do, we do have a nice photo of this. There you have it. There's Timur Garev jumping out of an airplane with a chessboard. Also wearing what appears to be, uh, you know, uh, a checkered clothing. So we, we can definitely say that Timur Garev really loves chess. And although it's a, it's a really interesting feat, it could also be a bit dangerous. Uh, I mean, what, what if he drops the chess board? It, it could hit someone in the head, or, or am I missing something? Uh, you know, if that, if that were to happen, you, you, you could have a headline in the newspapers tomorrow, you know, uh, it's not like chess ever uh, killed anyone a question mark or some some weird uh, title like that uh, but it's uh, hard to say he might have 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 had it glued to his hand or he might have dived um, uh, over an unpopulated area so uh, either way uh, i mean uh, however you put it very, very nice jumping uh, out of an airplane with a chessboard uh, yeah, I forgot. I will, if you want to see the entire jump, uh, there is a video recording of it. I will put a link to it in the description below. First thing you will see, just click on it and enjoy a nice skydive. Uh, but yeah, getting back to this game, uh, Linear Dominguez versus Timur Garev. Uh, Garev uh, Dominguez has to win this game and he opens with e4. Uh, we have c5 by Garev, knight to f3, knight to c6 and d4. The Sicilian is on the board. Uh, we have c captures, knight captures, knight to f6, knight to c3 and now d6, a nice classic Sicilian. Uh, we have f3 by white, uh, enforcing the center, we have e5, kicking the knight back, knight b3, and bishop to e6, this is all uh, very standard stuff, uh, and knight to d5, just a nice centralizing move where, of course, you can trade, but you don't really gain anything from it. Uh, you can't trade with the knight, because, of course, you will lose the piece, sorry about that, uh, and, of course, uh, if you trade with the bishop, then very early on in the game, you will give up the bishop pair. So, simply continuing, bishop to e7, uh, we have c4 by white, uh, grabbing further control of the d5 square. Uh, we have castles uh, by Garev, and then now comes bishop to e3. And here, already a very interesting move by Garev, a5. Uh, allowing uh, white to seemingly take control of the b6 square. And it seems very dangerous. For example, bishop b6 attacks the queen. Queen b8, you could go knight c7, attack the rook on a8, but here black can get uh, a very nice game. For example, knight d7, you give up the exchange, knight captures, uh, queen captures, now you have to move the bishop back as it's attacked, bishop to e3, and now with a4, black will get a lot of play for, for this exchange early on, knight d2 or c1, for example, and f5, uh, black immediately busts open the center, and white still has to make at least two moves to castle, uh, and all of black's pieces are, are you know, very, very organized and ready to... Uh, jump on the attack towards the to wh the white king. Uh, so after this a5 move, of course, nothing of the sort happened. Uh, we have queen to d2. Uh, Dominguez simply continues uh, developing. We have a4, pushing the knight back. Knight to c1, and now comes knight to d7, making room for, for this f5 maneuver. Uh, I, a lot of you have said that um, lately... Uh, you will often see an arrow before I actually do the arrow. It's uh, it's an interface glitch that they still haven't fixed, so uh, n not a lot of things I can do uh, to avoid it. I, 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 there are some things I can do to avoid it. For example, after I prepare a game, I can uh, like restart the entire interface or something, but uh, sometimes I forget, and uh, th then you will have this uh, arrow before an actual arrow should be there, so sorry about that. Uh, knight to e2 by Dominguez, and now f5. White, white king is still in the center, so of course Garev wants to start an attack. Uh, e captures on f5 by Dominguez, bishop captures on f5, and now knight e to c3. Uh, just gaining further control of the d5 square, and now the bishop can also be developed, white can castle, and so on. 
uh, knight to c5 by black with bishop to e2 preparing the castle and now uh, just a nice little check before before uh, seeing what what will happen. Uh, Dominguez blocks it with the g3 with bishop to f6 and now rook to d1. It's hard to say if the check was actually useful or if the g3 pawn uh, helps white in, in some way. Obviously, Garev decided that um, it, it was a weakening of the position. And of course, any move uh, by the pawn in front of the king is, is a weakening of the position uh, unless it's not. Uh, but okay, uh, knight to e6. Uh, and here we have castles. You can't win the d6 pawn. Uh, it's also a very nice idea. For example, you could play knight captures with check queen captures and grab the d6 pawn. Uh, but then you have this problem of a3. Uh, what a3 does is it uh, takes away uh, the escape square from the white queen. And now if you don't react to this, black will just capture the b2 pawn. And if you react to this with b3, then rook, FE8, rook fd8 wins the queen. Now you can see that uh, the knight covers the c7 square, the knight covers the c5 square, the c6 knight covers the b5 square, and now there's a pawn on a3, so the white king, the queen cannot escape. So you would, uh, well, easily blunder the queen here, which is not something we want to do in a final round of the US championship. Uh, but okay, after knight to e6, uh, we have castles by white, you know, safety first, uh, and now knight c to d4. Uh, with bishop to d3, not allowing uh, this this trade to happen, uh, of course, saving the light square bishop, and now comes bishop to h3, uh, grabbing yet more space on the king side, forcing the rook to move, rook to f2, and now bishop to g5. Uh, Garev wants to trade uh, trade bishops here, and he wants his uh, h3 bishop to remain on such a nice diagonal. Uh, bishop to f1, opposing the light square bishop, bishop captures with uh, rook captures, now doubling rooks on the f-file, bishop captures, queen captures, and now Garev goes for rook to c8. He goes after the c4 pawn, uh, and this is one of the nicer moments in the game. Uh, here you could uh, try and defend it, let's say queen d3, now you get knight c5 with an attack on the queen, the queen has to go back, black gains, gains some momentum, uh, but here uh, the critical idea is f4 and this is indeed what Dominguez played. So what do you play here? Uh, without uh, much thinking Garev did go for the c4 pawn. He played rook captures on c4 uh, again with the arrow and uh, it's a really interesting moment in the game. Here f captures on e5 was played but here uh, I was, uh, I was uh, watching the live coverage and uh, everyone went crazy like yeah white is winning here but you know how is white winning here? Uh, that's uh, the important question. So if, if you would like, feel free to pause the video and try to f figure out what you would play here with the white pieces. It's a very, very tricky engine line. So if you feel like it, you know, go, go right ahead. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do that, congratulations. You are an excellent spotter of engine lines. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, not F captures on E5, the move Dominguez played, but F5. This is the idea. And now, after knight g5, threatening knight to h3 to pick up the rook, first you play king g2, taking away the h3 square from black's knight, and now it, it appears that there is no good defense against f6. This is the point. Uh, but, uh, you know, first you have to see f5, then you have to see the tricky silent move king to g2, and then uh, you give black any move black wants, and still you're just going to play f6, and you will claim that you are winning. For example, whatever black plays, you will go f6, you will cut off the queen's defense uh, towards the knight, queen captures knight is a threat, pawn captures g7, uh, opening up the double rooks with check. Uh, it does seem that black would have, well, either uh, either an extremely difficult time here or just a, a lost end game. Uh, a game, as uh, Garev was also very low on time here, I, below, uh, I believe below three minutes. Uh, but okay, it did not happen in the game. Uh, Dominguez played f captures on e5, uh, and now comes rook captures on f2. Uh, rook captures and now rook to c5, uh, pressuring the knight here, uh, because if the position opens up, then the queen will also be pressuring the knight along the d file, uh, a very nice move. Uh, and also the knight cannot move, because then you would lose the e5 pawn. 
Uh, so king to g2 first, not allowing any tricky moves with the knight, improving the position of the king. Uh, we have h6 by Grave, uh, h4, and now knight to c, knight back to c6, uh, pressuring d5 pawn. So now you do have to capture, and it's very interesting. Uh, Garev still very, very low on time here, and he has still uh, to make 10 moves to reach time control. Uh, we have pawn captures, queen captures, now with a double attack against the knight, and here Dominguez plays rook to d2. And now you have the this huge threat of knight to f6 check winning the queen. Uh, so how do you prevent this? Uh, Garev played the absolute best move. He played knight c to d4, uh, which is uh, not all that uh, uh, clear because, well, white can just capture it and give up the rook for two knights. Uh, but with so so little time on the clock, Garev figures it out. Uh, Dominguez, after thinking about the position for quite some time, not quite some time, he didn't think a lot. Of, obviously, he captured the knight. It's the strongest move. He played rook captures, knight captures, queen captures, and now Garev has a rook for two knights, uh, and he only has one good line here. And there's still the threat of knight to f6 check winning the queen, or if queen captures on f6, you will win the rook on c5. So really feel free to pause the video here and try to find the line Garev saw uh, when he decided uh, to give up the two knights for the rook. It's really just a wonderful line. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple of seconds. We'll have a nice sip of water, have a, a bit of a sore throat. For those of you who were able to do it, you are just a, a, an amazing player, such such uh, much like the, the Blindfold King. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, A3. Here you had to find that Knight to F6 isn't a problem for Black. Well, it is a problem, but it's the best Black has. Uh, Dominguez played Knight to F6 check, and now you will either capture the pawn and lose the queen, uh, sorry, capture the Knight with the pawn and lose the queen, or you will play queen captures and lose the rook, which happened in the game. Uh, we have queen captures rook, and now Garev played pawn captures pawn on b2. And now white is up a knight, but you do have this problem of this pawn already being on b2. So what do you play here? Dominguez played queen d5 check, we have king to h8, and now comes knight to b1 blocking. If you try something like queen d3, guarding the knight and the b1 square, then queen captures on c3 is the problem. If queen captures, you get another queen into the game with equal material on the board. White cannot allow this. So here we have this position, knight b1. Dominguez is up a knight, and uh, he he has to win this game if he wants to become US champion. And it's not all that clear how you will do that. Uh, queen to g6, uh, attacking the knight. We have queen to d1, protecting the knight, and now just queen to e4, check. Uh, we have king to f2, queen to f5, check. A king goes back to g2, queen e4, check and king to h2. Uh, if this was any other game, I'm sure maybe uh, Dominguez would agree that this is a draw and he would uh, not push, uh, but uh, like I said, he has to win this game if he wants to be uh, the uh, 2019 US champion, so of course he has to do it, but unless this knight can somehow enter the game, uh, it's not all that clear how you will how you will win this game with, with just a queen that's pretty much stuck guarding the knight on b1. Uh, so we have queen to f5, now comes h5 by white and queen to f2 check. King h3, queen f5 check, king go, and, and now g4. Queen to e4 check, uh, and now comes king to g3, uh, not allowing any perpetuals. We have b5 now by black. Uh, a3, and now even b4. Black wants to trade off uh, white's last hope uh, of, of pushing something. Uh, we have a captures on b4, queen captures on b4, and now comes queen to d8 check. King to h7, now comes queen to d3 check, king goes back to h8, and now queen to f5. From f5, queen guards everything. All the pawns, protects the king, guards the knight on b1. But how do you advance with the white pieces? Uh, queen to d4 by Garev, we have king to f3, king to g8, and now comes king to e2. Now the white king will try to help out with the attack against the b2 pawn. Uh, king back to h8, now comes king back to f3, king to g8, and now queen to e6 with check. King to h8, now comes king to e2, and now king back to h7. Queen to f5 check, we have king to h8, now comes knight to d2. Finally, Dominguez is able to activate the knight, but uh, can the knight go any further? Uh, we have queen to c3. Uh, now preparing to uh, to go queen, queen to c1 and x... Um, uh, uh, well, uh, support the, the advancement of the pawn to b1 if the queen ever moves from this diagonal guarding b1. 
Uh, but now uh, Dominguez finds a plan. We have queen to f8 to check, king to h7, queen to f5 check, uh, king to h8, and now queen to e4 with uh, with some very nice ideas. Uh, king to g8 by Grev, and now comes queen to d5 check. <clears throat> uh, king to h8, queen to d8 check, king to h7, and finally uh, Dominguez manages to trade queens. We have queen to d3 with check. Uh, but queen captures, we have king captures on d3, sorry, and now just g6. King to c2, we have king to g7, and now knight e4. Pawn captures, pawn captures, and now king to f7. Uh, Dominguez tries to create a wall against the black king, so the black king cannot approach uh, the white pawn on h5, uh, but the path is pretty clear, it will be very hard to prevent this. Uh, we have king captures on b2, king to e6, and now king to c3. And now, if black can somehow eliminate the, the pawn, then the game's over. You cannot win a game with, with just a knight. Uh, king to f5, now comes king to d4, defending the knight. We have king to g4, and now knight to f6 check. So, feel free to pause the video here one last time, and what do you play here with black? How do you hold this? Uh, I'll give you uh, a, a few seconds. Uh, if you played any other move than king to f5, for example, <clears throat> uh, if you played uh, king here, king here, king here, uh, then you would lose the game. King to f5 is the only move. For example, if you try this, it seems that yes, you are attacking the knight and the pawn, but king e5, and now you have to go back. For example, <laughs> you have to go here, king goes here. You have to move further back, king goes here. Uh, not here, obviously. Uh, you will lose the pawn, white will promote the pawn and uh, win the game easily. So, uh, king to f5, this is what Gareev played, this is the strongest move, and now the knight has to move. Knight to e4 is played, uh, king to g4, again attacking the pawn, knight f6 check, king f5, and now knight to e8. Dominguez will try now to guard the pawn from, uh, from the other side. King g5, knight to g7, again defending the pawn, but king f6, attacking the knight. Uh, we have knight to e8 check, king g5, knight to g7, and here after king to f6, finally, uh, on move 77, uh, Dominguez uh, agreed that there was no way that he can uh, push this for a win, uh, and uh, they agreed to a draw. Uh, which uh, is, uh, you know, quite unfortunate for Dominguez, who played a, a brilliant tournament, and uh, as you can see, uh, finished in second place, ahead of Fabiano Coruana, uh, obviously better. Uh, better on tie breaks, uh, uh, half a point behind Hikaru Nakamura. If uh, if he was able to win this game against Garev, if Garev did not create such a masterpiece over the board, uh, he would be tied with Nakamura, and then we would have uh, 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 playoffs, and it would be it, it would be very interesting. It's hard to play play uh, you know faster time controls against Nakamura, but uh, with, with such an excellent tournament Dominguez played, I'm sure it would be really really impressive. Uh, but yeah, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It really <laughs> has... Uh, I enjoy chess games that have a story to it. Here it, it always seemed like uh, Dominguez will break through, break through, break through, and then uh, just uh, Garea found that A3 move with a rook sacrifice uh, that uh, stranded him with, uh, with being down a piece, but he was able to pull it off. Really, really an impressive achievement by Timur Garev. Once again, if you're interested, do check out his uh, jump uh, from, from the airplane with the checkboard. First link in the description below, it's it's quite nice. Uh, also, second link in the description below, check out the trailer for the Grand Chess Classic if you still haven't, really impressive chess footage, just awesome stuff. Uh, I would like to thank, uh, once again, uh, George Chatsi Georgiou, uh, Georg Brainschmidt, Marcus Teviot, uh, Alan Ferns, and Michael Hildebrandt for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon with one more game, uh, but from the Women's US Championship. Uh, as uh, also some very interesting stuff happened there. And uh, yeah, we're continuing with what we do usually. Uh, we'll be checking up on the on the Gashimov Memorial, uh, continuing the Capablanca saga as soon as I catch a break and, you know, just uh, enjoying what, whatever uh, we can. So thank you all, uh, and I will see you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day.